our powers with integer exponents uh, worksheet. Now, I actually already began to write some of these solutions out and I realized I did not leave myself enough space. So I'm gonna start fresh with a nice fresh piece of paper. All right, that's why you're gonna see a bit of writing on this piece of paper as we're going through the answers. All right, so we're gonna start with 1a. Okay, so that asks what six raised to an exponent three is when we multiply it by six raised to an exponent with negative three. Now we have this rule, if we have the same base of our powers and we just, and they're being multiplied, we can add their exponents. So it's really six to the power, pardon me, the exponent of three plus negative three. And I think you'll agree that when you add negative three to three, uh, you get zero. So the whole thing really is one because anything raised to exponent zero has the value one, which makes our work for question 1b quite easy. We have a half plus five sixths minus three quarters. And we might start thinking about common denominators. You can see the common denominator is 12, but we don't even need to worry about it. It's all raised to a power of zero. So the whole thing is one without us thinking too deeply about it. All right, we'll move on to question C. Question C reads that we have negative a quarter, and that's all raised to the power of negative three. <clears throat> so uh, we talked this week about how when we have a fraction inside a set of brackets, and it's all raised to a negative exponent, we want to start by flipping that fraction and expressing it as a positive exponent. So that whole thing really could be expressed as negative four over one, and we change that exponent to a positive value. Okay, and if you want to know the real reason behind why we're allowed to do that, I'd be happy to explain it, but uh, please just ask me sometime. Uh, but that happens to be a very consistent pattern that turns out to be very useful. Okay, um, now negative four over one is actually just a complicated way of saying negative four. So we have negative four cubed, uh, and negative four cubed is the same thing as negative four times negative four times negative four couple of different ways to express that, but I'm gonna start by saying, well, I know negative four times negative four, the square of four is 16, and it's gonna be positive. And we'll multiply that by negative four. And uh, so now we just have this multiplication. Uh, there's a couple of ways to do this. One is to memorize that four sixteens is 64, um, but say you don't wanna memorize that. Another trick, if you have to multiply a big number by a small number, is I can half this one and double this one. So I could actually express the same uh, statement is half of 16 is 8. I'll multiply that by twice this one, which is negative 8. And that's a little trick. It's called, I believe, Egyptian multiplication. Um, at least so I've heard it called by classic, uh, pardon me, expert math teachers. So I have 8 times negative 8, and that becomes negative 64. Okay. <clears throat> So we'll move on to question D. <clears throat> question D for part one is two to the power of negative three times two to the exponent of negative two. And uh, when we multiply these guys together, <clears throat> we're gonna add the exponents. We get two raised to an exponent of negative five. And, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, so we math teachers have a phobia of negative exponents. So we'd like to try to get rid of them whenever we can. So we're gonna use our negative exponent law. A negative exponent law says, I'll write it over here, anything raised to a negative exponent is its reciprocal raised to the positive version of that exponent. Reciprocal means flipped over one. Okay, and so that means that I can express this as one over, our base in this case is two, and the exponent from negative five turns to a positive five. When, and when we have low, small exponents like this, we should probably express them as a nice, easy to deal with number. Two raised to an exponent five, <clears throat> that's two times two times two, times two times two, which is actually 32. All right, on to question E. Question E asks us to evaluate uh, three halves uh, raised to a, a negative four exponent, and that's all going to be divided by two thirds. Now, 
with exponents, many people are going to take different paths to solving a question. Uh, your path to solving this question may not be very similar to the way I'm about to solve it, or maybe it's identical, uh, and that's not really important. Um, as long as you are consistent with your rules and applying them correctly, we should get to the same answer. So I'm going to choose one way to uh, address this question. And if it differs sufficiently from yours, such that you can't understand how my work is similar or different from yours, I want you to just come ask me, okay? Now, first things first, we have a, another fraction with a negative exponent. So what we want to do is flip the inside of the fraction, take the reciprocal, in other words, of that inside fraction, the reciprocal of three halves, it's two thirds, and we change it to a positive exponent. And that's all being divided by two thirds, now you can see we've got a fraction, we're going to be dividing it by something. So actually, when I see that, I like to express this as a fraction as well. And we'll uh, address what we should do with that in a second, because I want to deal with this first. Okay, 2 over 3 raised to an exponent 4. So if I was to take an expansion root to this, I could say that's 2 over 3 times 2 over 3 times 2 over 3 times 2 over 3. Or... 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 is 2 raised to an exponent 4 over 3 times 3 times 3 times 3, or 3 raised to an exponent 4. So we see that when we have a fraction raised to an exponent, I can actually distribute that value to the top numerator fraction. In other words, multiply the exponent of 1 by 4 to get 2 to the power of 4. And the bottom as well, similarly, I could actually multiply it through. And that's a generally true statement. So, okay, I could actually express this 2 over 4, pardon me, 2 raised to an exponent of 4 over 3 raised to an exponent of 4. That's all divided by 2 cubed over 1. Okay. Now, when you divide fractions, you might remember that what you really want to end up doing is multiplying by the reciprocal. There's that reciprocal word again. So we're going to flip this guy over and multiply it by 1 over 2 cubed. <sighs> okay, um, so when we multiply fractions, we like to see if we can simplify diagonally or up and down first before we do so. And we can actually simplify diagonally. Uh, that might be more obvious if I wrote these instead of as exponents, but as numbers. So I'm just going to take a second to do that, because 2 power 4 is actually 16. So just imagine for a second that I had this statement, 2 cubed is 8, not 6. <clears throat> okay, so you can see that these could be both divided by 8, and I could leave just a 1 there, and this is, I divide that by 8 and get 2, so this whole expression could be simplified as 2 over 3 uh, raised to the power of 4 times 1 over 1, which is actually just 2 over 3 raised to the power of 4. However, uh, it's useful to see that if we think of this instead as actually 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 over 3 raised to the power of 4, and that's multiplied by 1 over 2 times 2 times 2, you actually see that these just cross out without actually ever having, have, ever having to figure out what 2 raised to an exponent 4 or 2 raised to an exponent 3 is. So while that's trivially faster in this case, you could imagine that instead of 2 raised to the power 4, you have 2 raised to the power 41. And instead of 2 raised to the power 3, you maybe 2 raised to the power 39. And then this process becomes actually quite quick, much quicker than finding what 2 raised to the power of 41 is, which is 2.199, all multiplied by 10 raised to an exponent 12. Or in other words, all multiplied by a trillion, about two trillion. So it's a tremendous number. So this is a little shortcut for when things get a little hairier like that. Okay, let's move on. Question F, 1F, asks us to evaluate. We have 3 raised to an exponent of 4, and we multiply by 3 raised to an exponent of negative 3. That's all over 3 raised to an exponent of 2. And we saw when we were doing some practice with exponents in the last worksheet, that uh, we want to treat the top of a fraction like a bracket if we're thinking about bed mass. 
So we're going to do the things on top of the fraction first, as if they were in a bracket. And in fact, we could rewrite this such that the top is in a bracket, and then we have a division and another term. Uh, so we'll do these guys first. And so uh, we have a multiplication, so we're going to add to the exponents. 4 plus negative 3 gives 3 raised to an exponent 1 over 3 squared. Okay, uh, I'm going to look at a couple different ways to investigate this. One is to recognize that what this really means is 3 over 3 times 3. This is an example where actually rewriting this as an expansion, I think, makes our work a little easier. I can cross out these threes on the top and bottom. That, of course, leaves me with a 1 on top. So I could say it's 1 third. Alternatively, what I could do is I could say, well, I've got a division now, so I can divide these powers. And when I do, I subtract their exponents. 1 take away 2 is negative 1. However, we hate negative exponents, so I can express that as the reciprocal raised to a power of positive 1, or 1 third. Both take us to the same answer, uh, but they're just different ways of looking at that problem. All right, g, uh, we have 1 half, all cubed, times 4 fifths raised to an exponent 0. So very quickly recognize, well, that's obviously 1, and we just have to, and we're multiplying that by whatever this is cubed. So uh, I say it's a half of a half of a half, but maybe I'll write that out. One half of a half of a half, all times that value, which is one. This will be one times one times one, which is one, over two times two times two, which is eight, times one, which I don't need to include. However, I could have actually just said that's one cubed over two cubed. One cubed is one, two cubed is eight. Okay, and then I've got this expression, 2 raised to the power of 0, plus 3 raised to an exponent of 0, plus 4 raised to an exponent of 0, all over 5 raised to an exponent of 0, plus 6 raised to an exponent of 0. Great, okay. So that's uh, 2 raised to an exponent of 0 is 1, plus 1, plus 4 raised to an exponent of 0 is 1, over 1 plus 1, which is 3 over 2. And we're done at that stage. Uh, last one for question one, we have one i, which says we have three quarters squared. We're going to multiply that by three quarters to an exponent negative seven, and we'll multiply it all by three quarters cubed. Okay, so I can see a few different ways to approach this, but my first instinct is to think that well, these actually are all the same base. So I'm actually going to use my multiplication rule. It says that when I multiply any two powers with the same base, I just add their exponents. I'm just going to see what happens. I have a feeling it's going to simplify things a lot. All right, so let's have a look. So I'm going to say that I'm going to express this whole thing as 3 quarters raised to an exponent of 2 plus negative 7 plus 3. which I think you'll agree becomes 3 quarters raised to a, an exponent of negative 2. <clears throat> okay. Again, we have a fraction with a negative exponent, so we should write the reciprocal of that fraction to the power of a positive exponent. And then uh, we could say, okay, well, that's 4 squared, or 16, over 9 squared, which is 9. Can that be simplified? Well... It can't. And the reason I know that is because I know that uh, if this is 4 times 4 and this is 3 times 3, there are no common factors between those. These are 3s. Those are actually just a bunch of 2s in a row. So there's no way to simplify that. Okay. So let's move on now to question 2. Question 2, A... asks us to simplify x squared multiplied by y to the power of negative 4 over x raised to exponent 6, y cubed. Okay, 
So generally speaking, we've been doing whatever we can on the top of the fraction before we proceed, but it doesn't look like there's much we can do here. All right, uh, so how should we approach this? There's a few different options to us. I think I'm going to try to two different adventure paths, and I want you to choose one that makes sense to you. Okay. Uh, one is to think, uh, to begin by uh, taking any negative exponents and writing them on the opposite side of the fraction. So we could start by saying x squared on the top remains, but we're going to drag this net y to the power of negative 4 down to the bottom. Okay. And we, when we do that, we change its power, pardon me, exponent, to be a positive. And then we get x squared over x power of 6. And then we can add the exponents together for y, and we get y to the power of 7. Okay. And uh, I can see where things are going here. Um, but maybe I'll go the long route. I know that... Uh, hmm. Um... Sorry, I'm just trying to think about which is the best way to go here. There's a few different ways I'm seeing. Uh, I'm going to actually subtract these two. I'm going to say, okay, well, I'm going to divide these, which means I'm going to subtract their exponents. I should get x power of negative 4. The answer to any of those division questions always ends up on the top of the, the, desk, the fraction. We have y to the power of 7 on the bottom, which is fine. But we always want to take our negative exponents and write the reciprocal. So we actually turn that and put it back on the bottom. Okay, so that's one option. That's one way to get to the answer. Uh, another way, especially with the x's, I think this is useful, is I could expand these. Uh, x times x times x times x times x times x. And I could write that as uh, 1 over y times 1 over y times 1 over y is 1 over y times y times y times y. So I can see these x's are going to cross out. I'm going to end up with the same x to the power of 4 that I did over here on the bottom of my fraction. Okay. Um, so it's starting to maybe look a little confusing. So if you don't like this method, you can just look at this other, maybe more simple method. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, okay, well, that leaves me with um, 1 over y times 1 over y times 1 over y times 1 over y. And that's all over. Like, I'm pretty much done with max, so I'm going to write that as x power 4 times y times y times y. Now I'm going to show you a little trick here. Uh, now it's true that I could actually write, rewrite this as a 1 over x power of 4 times y times y times y times this other fraction, which will have the 1 over y's on the top and 1 on the bottom like that. Now take a second to convince yourself that that's true, that I can split a fraction, so I'm multiplying the numerator over here by the denominator over here. Okay. Now, uh, you'd probably also recognize that when you have something over 1, it doesn't actually add anything to the information, so you can actually rewrite that as x power of 4 times y times y times y times, I could actually write that as 1 over y times 1 over y times 1 over y times 1 over y. So what we see here is just this long multiplication. So I could express 1 times 1 times 1 times 1 times 1 as 1 on the top, x to the power of 4, and we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, y to the power of 7 here. So we get the same answer two different ways. Uh, you can choose the way that makes sense for you to think about it. But as long as you're consistent with your exponent laws, you can choose many paths. So let's look on to this one, x to the power of 8 over x to the power of 10, y negative 2, y to the power of negative 6. Let's try a different method here. We're just going to do some simple division for both. No tricks. So I'll divide x to the power of x to the exponent 8 by x to the exponent 10. 
subtract the exponents, I get x to the power of negative 2. And I'll take negative 2 and subtract negative 6. I'm going to write that one out, it's just so we notice. There are two negatives, which make it a positive, so we're going to add them together. And that gives us x negative 2 and y to the power of 4. Negative 2, take away 6 is like adding, probably take away negative 6 is like adding 6. That gives us 4. All right, and then lastly, we want to get rid of our negative exponents. So we're going to flip that one to the denominator. And we get y power 4 over x squared, like so. All right, we're going to move on to question C. Question C says uh, we have x squared, y to the power of negative 4. I'll raise to a negative 3. Okay, um, uh, well, so we have a negative exponent. We could actually write this as a reciprocal if we wanted to a positive exponent, but you know what? I have a feeling that I have another uh, way that might make sense. So I'm going to actually just distribute as a multiplication rule the negative 3 and multiply it by each of these exponents. So I get x squared negative 6. And that's going to give y to the power of positive 12. And then, just like in the last question, we have this negative exponent on this x, so I'm going to flip it down to the bottom, the denominator. There are a few different arguments I can make for why we do that, but I'm going to just write that more simply here. Okay, and then we have positive exponents, and we're done. We can't, these guys can't communicate, they don't have the same base. All of our exponent laws require we use, have the same base in our term. All right. So we'll move on. Uh, question D. Question D asks us to look at a little hairier thing. A raised to a negative 2. B, 5. A, negative 3. Times B, negative 2. And that's all over. A times B raised to a negative 1. So again, we should treat the top of the fraction as uh, like a bracket step. We'll do everything on the top of the fraction or bottom of the fraction first. So I can see some terms here that can be combined. We've got a raised to a negative 5. And b, 5 plus negative 2 gives us cubed. And uh, a times b raised to a negative 1. And now we have a simple division here. Now. Here is a case where instead of doing the division, I can actually see that uh, it might actually be faster to take our negative exponents, just flip them up to their component side. So I've got b cubed times b raised to a positive 1, or just b positive 1. And I've got a positive 5 times a down here. And it gives us b raised to a 4, or and a raised to a 6. Now, if you didn't like that, you just want to keep it straight. You could have just said, well, I'll do a division here. There's a little one there. So I'll say, okay, that's a raised to the negative 5. Take away 1, so it's negative 6. And b cubed, take away that 3, take away negative 1. Actually, it gives us a 4. And then we take our negative and we flip it down to the bottom. So that gives us b raised to the power of 4 over a to the power of 6. And you can choose which one works best for you. And then we move on to question E. Okay, Let's see where this one's going already. We have a cubed b raised to a negative 2 over c raised to a negative 4. That's all over negative 1. Uh, a couple of ways to go here. I think maybe what we'll do, since we have a fraction with a negative exponent, is we'll start by flipping everything inside the fraction up. So uh, taking the reciprocal, I should say. And that's all to the power of positive 1 now. And we already know that anything to the positive 1 is just itself. So we can get rid of that. And so we're all well and good. The only last thing we have to do is take our negative exponents and flip them. So we want uh, to rewrite this so that the b to the power of negative 2 flips up to the top becomes b to the power of positive 2. We have a cubed, doesn't go anywhere, and the c raised to the negative exponent 4 becomes positive exponent 4. There we go. 
And then, lastly, we have 2F. So 2F reads, we have A cubed times B raised to negative 2, and that's all multiplied by A raised to negative 4 times B power 5. So the first thing I would do is this exponent step. I would distribute this exponent to both of these. There's a little 1 there, so that means we have a raised to the negative 6, and b to the negative 2, and that's all multiplied by a raised to negative 4 times b to the power 5. I can change the order of those if I like. I can say it's a raised to negative 6 times a to the negative 4 times b to the negative 2 times b to the power 5, and then I can multiply these together, adding their exponents, a to the power of negative 10 times uh, b... Oh, I'm going to add those exponents, negative 2 plus more, 5 more, gives us positive 3. And then I take any negative exponents and I write them as their reciprocal. So that means we have uh, 1 over a to the power of 10 times b cubed. And when we multiply those together, b cubed ends up on top. So we end up with b cubed over a to the power of 10. All right. So let's move on. So that's question three to tackle. Okay, so question three is a little different flavor. Asks us to find the value for x that gives us a truth statement here. So what power can you raise three to so that you get nine? So I can think about that. How many threes do I multiply together to get nine? And the answer is two of them. And so that means that 3 raised to the power 2 is 9, which maybe you could have done in your head, or maybe not. And that means x is the power of 2. I can always test that. It's an algebra question, so I can always check by putting my answer in for x. And when I do that, I get 3 squared, or 3 times 3 is 9, equals 9, and it gives me something true. That means I was looking at the right x the whole time. So big smiley face, maybe a little rainbow, and a pot of gold at the end. I'll save the leprechaun for later. Um, okay, cool, moving on to question two. Uh, pardon me, question 3b. So for 3b, uh, I've got a very similar question. 5 raised to some number is 25. And with questions like, I think, a and b, you can probably do a bit of trial and error. What do you raise 5 to a power to get 25? How many times do you multiply 5 by itself before you reach 25? Well, 5 once is 5, but 5 twice is 25. So I would say 5 squared is 25. OK, so I could say x had a value of 2 just like in the last question. And I think we're going to go through the check work each time for these and say, okay, well, is that true? Uh, is it true? Is 5 squared equal to 25? 5 times 5 is 25. It is true. 25 is 25, which is true. True science fact. Done. All right, we're going to move on now to question C. Okay, so C asks, what do you raise 2 to a power of to get 32? And there are a few ways to approach this. One, uh, I think we will continue the same one. So I know 2 raised to a power of 1 is just 2. 2 raised to exponent 2 is 2 times 2, which is 4. So it's not 2. 2 raised to the power of 3 is 2 times 2 times 2, which is 4 squared. Pardon me, 4 times 2, which is 8. So it's not 8. 4 is 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, which is 16. And I can see here that I think I'm on the winner here. 2 times 2, so it's going to be 16 times 2, which is 32. So uh, the mystery number here, x, was 5. And just for good standards and practices, I'm going to check my work. Is it true that 2 to the power of 5 is 32? Well, what is 2 to the power of 5? 2 to the power of 5 is 32. 
32. So I can say 32 equals 32, and that is true statement. If I had a false statement here, it would mean I was wrong. And we'd have to go back and consider. All right. I'm going to do 3D. So 2 raised to what power? It's going to give 1 eighth. Okay, so I can see that this is a reciprocal, which makes me think uh, I'm going to have a negative exponent here. So let's try some negative powers. 2 to the power of negative 1. Well, that's going to be 1 over 2 to the power of 1. It's just a half. Okay, oh, so it's not negative 1. 2 to the power of negative 2, what's that? That's uh, 1 over 2 squared, or 1 quarter. So that one doesn't work. 2 raised to negative 3, that's uh, 1 over 2 cubed, which is 2 times 2 times 2, which is 1 over... Hey, we found it. Okay, cool. So that means x, in this case, was negative 3. And we'll just check our work. So is it true? Is 2 raised to a negative 3 equal to 1 eighth? Question mark. Well, what is 2 raised to a negative 3? 2 to the power of... Where's my negative button? Negative 3. I get 0 0.125, but I don't like that one as a fraction, so I'm going to use my fraction button. I get 1 8th for sure. Okay. 1 8th is equal to 1 8th. That's a true statement. So that x was correct. Our value of negative 3 was correct value for x. Okay, on to e. So 3e uh, says 10 to the x is equal to 1 over 100. So similar thing, we can see that we're going to have a negative value of x this time in order to make the reciprocal. So let's check with 10 to the negative 1. Like it is 1 over 10 to the power of 1, or 1 tenth. So that one's not right. We'll try negative 2 as 1 over 10 to the power of 2, which means 1 over 10 times 10. 100. Hey, what do you know? Okay, so that means our x value was negative 2. We'll check here. Is it true? Uh, is it true that 10 to the power of negative 2 gives us 1 over 100? Well, let's just find out. What is 10 to the power of negative 2? It's 0 0.01, which is 1 hundredth. Yeah. True. Okay. So 3f. I have a uh, 1 half raised to some number, and overall that gives me 1. So that might take a bit of puzzling. Um, however, we know that there is some exponent, some, uh, some exponent that when it doesn't matter what's inside the bracket, if you raise that power, that exponent I should say, that gives you 1 as the answer. And we know that value is zero. So uh, one is, so our x value here is actually zero. That's what we raise half to our exponent of, such that we get one. Okay, we'll just check. This checking work seems a bit redundant with this question, but uh, I'll, I'll do it anyway. One half raised to the power of zero, is that equal to one? Let's just check. One half is 0.5 raised to the power of zero, yeah, it's one. Okay, so 1 equals 1, and that's true. Okay. So we got two more to go, and these are the heavier of the eight. I think you'll agree. So let's start with 3G. 3G says, okay, I've got 1 ninth. And that's equal to 3 raised to 2x plus 6. And that, how, do, how are we going to solve that? Hmm, so what I can do for this question to make it simpler is I'm going to do a substitution. I'm going to write it as a simpler problem first. I'm going to say, let's take that whole messy, gross exponent and we'll simplify it. Let's say, let's let 2x plus 6 just equal, I'll choose some other variable. I'm going to choose m. M for Mr. Roberts. So I'm going to rewrite that. 1 ninth is equal to 3 raised to an exponent n. 
Okay, and the question is, well, what power of m, what value could m have so that it would be equal to 1 ninth if you raise 3 with an exponent of it? Uh, and so is it negative 1? Well, that's not as 1 over 3. So what if what about negative 2? 3 raised to negative 2 is 1 over 3 squared. Well, it's 1 9. So m is negative 2. Okay, now we weren't asked about m, we were asked about x. So let's take this a step further. Well, m, let's go back to our substitution then. If 2x plus 6 was equal to some letter m, and we found that that value of m was negative 2, we could say that that whole thing is actually equal to the value of negative 2. Okay, and then we can solve for x. This is an easy algebra step. We're going to get x by itself. It's being multiplied by 2, and 6 is being added. We want to get x by itself, so we're going to take away the 6 first. We're going to subtract 6 from both sides. Because it's 2x equals negative 8. And then lastly, we should divide by 2 to isolate x completely. And then we get x is negative 4. All right. So this is where you can see that our habit of checking our work is going to come in pretty handy. So let's just double check that. That was a lot of different math steps here. Maybe some leaps of logic that we're not too sure about, so let's just check. What if I replace x with negative 4? I get 2 times negative 4 plus 6. Let's just see what happens here. 1 ninth on the left, 3 raised to a 2 times negative 4, that's negative 8 plus 6. So we get 1 over 9 is equal to 3 raised to negative 2. Let's just rewrite that as a positive exponent. So it's 1 over 3 squared. So I get 1 ninth is equal to 1 over 9, which is true. Okay. So that was a, I think you would agree, a much harder question. So let's move on to 3h. See what 3h has in store for us. Okay, so we've got 1 is equal to a raised to a third of x plus 4. Oh, oops. Okay. So it's up here. And I'll move this over just a tad so we can see the question as well. And the stipulation here is also that the value of a, the, uh, the base, can't be 0. Now, uh, as you move on in math, you're going to see little statements like this added on to uh, add a little bit more precision to a question. This states that, um, well, if a had a power of, pardon me, a base of zero, that would make a certain part of this question collapse. So it's a statement uh, of a restriction. And we're going to see more of those as we go. And we'll talk in more detail about why we include restrictions at a later time. Okay. So, again, I think it, this looks a little heavy. I think we'd be behooved to do a substitute. Wait, hang on. Is that how you spell substitute? Substitute. And we'll say, okay, let's let this heavy exponent, one-third plus four x plus 4, and we'll just make that equal to, um, maybe I'll choose another letter, let's choose, we want to use a, uh, so let's choose b. Okay, so let's take a look at this question with that replaced. 1 is equal to a raised to power b. So what power could b have such that this whole thing's equal to 1? Think about that for a second. You can pause the video. Well, any is the only number that you can raise something as a, a power of that gives you one, and it's zero. So this tells us a raised to the power of zero is one, so then we get, well, b has a value of zero. So now we take out, we weren't asked about b, we were asked about x. So now we say, okay, well, if one third of x plus four was equal to b, and b was zero, then one-third of x plus 4 must be equal to 0. And that's something we can now 
solve algebraically, we can uh, take away 4 from each side. I got 1 third x is negative 4. So if a third of x is equal to negative 4, well, an x then is going to be 3 times bigger. And I get x is negative 12. And I think we'll be benefited by doing another little quick check here. Is that true? If I rewrite the question with a negative 12, does this work? So I get 1 is equal to a. A third of negative 12 is negative 4 plus 4, which gives us 1 is equal to a to the power of 0. And provided our restriction that a isn't 0, because 0 to the power of 0 is indeterminate and is not equal to 1, we get to say that this is definitely true, that 1 is 1, this is true. Okay, please ask me if there, you have any further questions about any of these uh, practice problems, or just send me an email and we can set up a time to talk about it.